I'm going to show you five new auth features that you absolutely need to know if you want fine-grained control over managing your ever-growing list of active users. Let's get into it. Number one, identity linking. With an app that has multiple authentication strategies, we want to give our user the option to sign in with any of these and be authenticated as the same Superbase account. This is fine if the email address is the same across those different methods, as Superbase will automatically link these together as the same user. But what if I want to link an account with a different email? This is now possible with the link identity method. This button wraps that new link identity method so we can connect another account. This time we're going to go with GitHub. And now that john at superbase.com account is linked to this Superbase account, even though the emails do not match. Small caveat, if they've already signed in with this account, then there'll already be a user associated with that login. So it will require manually merging these from the Superbase studio. Number two. Session control. You now have more fine-grained control over configuring the user's session. This enforce single session per user option is similar to Netflix or another streaming service where a user signing in on one device will automatically sign out any other devices to make it harder for users who are sharing that same account. No more sharing, unless you want them to or you don't care. This next timebox user sessions option is where the user can only be signed in for a specific amount of time. So let's say 60 seconds. So you can think of this as a ticketing website you're using to book tickets for your favorite concert, but it's only gonna hold the tickets for five minutes. Only instead of releasing the hold on the tickets, you get signed out of the app. And this inactivity timeout is similar to the time box, but the timer only starts when the user is inactive. You can think of this as like a banking app where you don't want that session to be active if the user has walked away. Number three, password strength. You've been able to set a minimum password strength for a while, but now you can specify specific characters that are required. Passwords that don't have at least one of these will be rejected as weak. Number four, leaked passwords. You can now prevent your users from using a password that has been listed on have I been pwned Org. This is a great opportunity to educate them about password security, the importance of unique passwords, and why they should use a password manager. They'll love you for it. This has also been open sourced as its own Go package that can be used outside Superbase. Number five. Auth hooks. You can now tell Superbase to run a Postgres function to handle any of these events. So when a new JWT is created, we could run a function to remove the user property, meaning this user property will no longer be included in the JWT. And that Postgres function might look something like this. So we have this function, it receives the JWT as an input, and then we're returning that input minus the user property. Or we could add a property to the JWT, like this is super cool property, which we've set to true. This will then flow through the entire Superbase stack so in an RLS policy, you could enable the select action if the auth.jwt function, so this will give you back the entire JWT, and then if that has a property for is underscore super underscore cool, and it's equal to true, then this super cool user can select this super cool row. If you want to go deeper with RLS, you should definitely check out this video right here, where we use Superbase AI to write RLS policies for us, making authorization as simple as having a chat with your favorite robot friend. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.